All right, let's get started. Um, welcome to, uh, to this session, which is on uh, demographic data and how we measure poverty in the Jewish community. Um, I'm going to share my screen. I have some slides to share with you all. Okay. Can you all see the, the slides now? Yes? Okay, great. Okay. Um, let me get started here. There we go. Okay. All right, let me um, just qu start quickly with uh, a definition of poverty. We, we tend to think of poverty in the United States um, simply based on income. Um, that's the most common way we, we measure it. Um, it's the way the federal government measures it. Um, but there are, but poverty really is just a more general concept about economic deprivation or a lack of essential economic resources. Um, and there's, there's two forms of poverty, um, absolute poverty and relative poverty. So absolute po poverty refers to some minimal level of, um, of material possessions or of income um, below which people fall in order to meet their, their basic needs. Relative poverty refers to a lack of resources compared to what other people possess in the, in the same society. Um, and uh, they're often related, but they're really not, they're not exactly the same thing. So let me uh, give you a couple of examples and then some, some other some other illustrations of how we measure poverty. So income, of course, is the common one, as I said. Um, in the United States, we measure poverty in terms of income by um, household size and income. So as household size increases, the income levels can increase uh, um, to be considered to be living under poverty. But to just give you an example, for a one-person household in the United States, so for a single adult living by, uh, by themselves, in the year 2020, the US federal government puts the federal poverty threshold, that's that FPT, at $12,760. So if you earn less than $12,760 and you're a single person living by yourself, the government thinks that you're living in poverty. Um, I think we can all probably imagine how difficult it would be to live um, on less than $13,000 a year. Relative poverty measures tend to use um, like a percentage of the median income in a country as their, as their uh, criteria. So typically about 50% of the median income. So a relative measure in the United States um, for a single person household, the median income in the United States is about $40,000. So if we took half of that, be about $20,000, we could set and this is the way many European countries do it, we could set our poverty level at about $20,000 as a relative measure. Um, uh, there's a long history about why the United States has absolute measures. Um, and now that we have them, um, uh, public officials for political reasons uh, don't wanna raise the level because that means more people will appear to be in poverty. Um, on official statistics. So we've never been able to move towards a higher income level. Um, but you can see that there is a difference um, in how we measure. All right, so that, those are income-based measures. There are also hardship measures. And by hardship measures, we mean um, the inability to pay for necessities like food, uh, medical care and medicine, uh, rent and mortgage and utility bills. So that's another way that we can measure uh, poverty. And we can also ask people about their subjective, their own subjective assessments of their financial situation um, on an ordered scale and use that as a measure of, of poverty as well. We'll get to all of those. There are some additional measures um, uh, of poverty that poverty researchers um, often look at. We have not done too much of this in the Jewish community. We've done a little, and we'll get to that as well. Um, but some of those measures include things like extreme poverty, which would be 50% of the federal poverty threshold. So for that one person household, if your income is below roughly $6,500 a year, um, you would be considered living in extreme poverty. Near poverty is that, that, er, that um, 
at income level above the poverty threshold, but still having low income. So we usually measure that as a percentage of the po federal poverty thresholds. So 150 to 250 percent above those. Um, and many people in the Jewish community feel like that's a more realistic um, measure of, uh, of poverty in the, in the Jewish community. Um, concentrated poverty, we don't have a whole lot of concentrated poverty uh, in the Jewish community. It refers to a geographic area with, where a significant minority of residents are living in poverty. So the typical poverty rate in the United States right now is about 12%. We had a geographic area where 30 or 40% of, of people were living in poverty, that would be considered a, a concentrated area of poverty. Poverty researchers also sometimes look at longitudinal experiences with poverty. We have not done this very well in the Jewish community at all, and that's part of the initiative that I'll be, that I'll be telling you about. Um, we know from research on Americans in general that about half of all people will, at some point in their lives, go through a year where their income falls below the poverty level. Um, at any one point in time, it's about, like I said, it's about 10 or 11%. So there are a lot of people who have a, an episode of, of living in poverty and then come out of it, right? So um, the extent of poverty in the, Jewish, in the general population is much broader over time than it is at any one point in time when we take a survey. So we're trying to trying to broaden our time frames in Jewish community studies as well to get a better sense of, of um, sort of the, the broader longitudinal scope of, of poverty in the community. And there are some other measures as well um, that we sometimes look at in poverty research, um, the ability to pay for emergency expenses, um, income inequality and assets are two other related topics. I don't want to spend uh, time talking much about them other than to just mention them as, as other concepts and, and other measures that we sometimes uh, use in, in poverty research. Okay, so how have, how have we studied poverty in the Jewish community? Um, the, the best single word I can use to describe it is we've, just, we've, we've, we've um, studied it very inconsistently. Um, we, this is this on both national studies like the National Jewish Population Surveys, um, the, the other national studies that have been done, such as the Pew Research Center study um, and the, all the local Jewish community studies. Um, we, we have asked many questions about poverty. Um, we, we have a, a fair amount of data, but it's not very, but it's not standardized and it's not terribly comparable with each other. And that's part of what we're trying to do. So, for example, when we've asked about income on studies, um, the income brackets that we use on studies have been, have been different across studies. Relatively few studies have actually used the federal poverty guidelines or the near poverty measures. Um, hardship measures are becoming more common, but they've been relatively limited in the past. Subjective assessments, we've had a bunch of different questions and, and answers to, those, to, the, uh, to the way those questions have been asked. Um, that make it again difficult to compare. Um, and as I said before, as I alluded to before, there's been really li very little effort to, um, to measure um, overtime experiences with, with poverty. So that brings me to, uh, to our initiative. Um, the Weinberg Foundation, which um, is located in the Baltimore, Maryland area, um, and JFNA have, have um, teamed up um, for an initiative to try to standardize um, and expand our measurements of poverty on local Jewish community studies. Many um, federations um, undertake local, local studies of their populations, um, some on a relatively consistent basis every, every decade or so, others a little more episodically. Um, and we're trying, to, um, we're trying to, as I said, to standardize and expand the measurements through a grant program um, to incentivize communities to use a core set of poverty measures on their community studies going forward. And there's three sets of measures, income measures, hardship measures, and self-assessments. And I go through those uh, in a little bit of detail. So for the income measures, we are asking communities um, to, uh, to make sure that they measure income specifically at the 100% of the federal poverty threshold. So in other words, those exact, those exact uh, limits so that we all have data on Jewish communities that are comparable to the non-Jewish community, the general community in those areas and nationally that the government uh, provides, the federal government collects. We're also asking communities to 
uh, to use 150 and 250 percent of those federal poverty thresholds in questions to measure at that at that income at those levels as well, um, so that we have comparable data across communities. Um, and as I said, there's most people I think who work in the Jewish community feel like that, even at 150 and 250 percent of the federal poverty thresholds, those are still pretty low income levels, um, and there's a lot of need associated um, with households. Um, um, at those levels as well, uh, because the, the poverty thresholds themselves are quite low. Um, we're also asking the, on, the, on the community studies, uh, we're asking households whether they've been unable in the past year um, to, uh, to be able to, to buy food, um, to um, uh, pay for medical care or medicine, to afford their rent or their mortgage, um, or to pay for their utility bills. And after asking them for the past year, we're asking them to think back three years to think about that as well. So we're trying to, ex again, trying to expand the time frame and get a little bit of purchase on the longitudinal experience um, of poverty in the, in the community. And then we've settled on one standard question to ask about subjective assessments. Um, those are the response categories uh, that you can see there on the, on the slide. Um, we're asking them for their current assessments, and we're recommending that the studies also ask them um, whether in, if in the past three years they've um, been unable to make ends meet or just managing. So again, try to expand that, that time frame. Um, we have a couple of other questions um, that are recommended on the initiative about emergency expenses and assets, um, but uh, um, those are not core questions, they're, they're recommended. So in terms of the, the community study grant requirements, um, a community study would have would be a what we call a probability study. So that's a technical word that means um, every Jewish household in the community would have a chance to get into the sample. Um, so it's a truly representative uh, sample of the, of the local Jewish community um, using community lists or distinctive um, um, distinctive Jewish names only would not, would not uh, qualify you. Those can be part of the sampling procedure, but um, uh, there needs to be a more rigorous methodology than just that. Um, the communities need to contract with a reputable researcher and we can certainly help um, communities locate researchers. There are several of them that specialize in Jewish community studies. The core poverty questions need to be used, obviously. Um, there are some additional questions. So for the grant process itself, I haven't, um, I'm not gonna go into detail on these. This, this, this project started out focusing on poverty and um, like many projects, it has grown. Um, and we're now also including questions on race and ethnicity um, and on household LGBTQ status. Uh, so there's some additional questions that need to be included. Um, if you uh, do all those things, um, and use those three sets of questions um, on poverty, race and ethnicity and LGBTQ status. Um, there are grants available up uh, to, in the amount of $60,000 to help subsidize studies. Um, there are at least in this initial phase, 10 grants. Um, don't know if there will be further grants after that. I'm hoping that there will be, but for right now we've, we've um, uh, the Weinberg Foundation has been able to um, uh, guarantee at least 10 grants. In this, in as I said, in the amount of sixty thousand dollars each. So far, we've had about um, eight, possibly nine, depending. If some two communities may go in on the study together. Um, communities have expressed interest. Um, four of them are fairly, fairly, um, fairly well along in their planning stages. Um, I believe one of them is actually in the field right now doing surveying, um, and four others are are sort of in the earlier planning stages. Um, this whole project started before the pandemic. Um, we've been working with Weinberg for about two years or so on getting this up and running. Um, and like many things, um, it was interrupted by COVID. There were several communities that were ready to go into the field with their surveys um, and had to, last spring and had to delay them. Um, and we've also had to go back and reword some of our questions um, about time references based on, on COVID. Um, so uh, we are working out those kinks and, um, um, <coughs> excuse me, um, and um, we hope at this point that we'll start to get to the, some of the first results from the community studies that are sort of farthest along in the process in about a year or so, um, once all the surveying research is done and the data are 
looked at and analyzed and, 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 um, and released. Um, one further thing just before I, uh, before I wrap up about the Pew Research Center. So um, they're not formally part of, of this initiative. The Pew Research Center is an independent research group and they, they, um, they work, they make their own decisions. But we did, um, I don't think it's a secret that uh, Pew Research Center is coming out with another study of American Jews um, in the next couple of months. I don't know the exact timing, um, but it will be out um, sometime soon. Um, we were able to work with Pew to, to um, cause they, they set up advisory committees. I'm on that committee. We were able to work with them to place um, um, some questions on the national study about poverty among American Jews as well. So we're gonna have some nice, good national data um, about poverty and economic vulnerability in the American Jewish community within the next couple of months um, when the Pew Research Center study comes out. Um, okay, that, that, uh, that wraps up my presentation. We have about three minutes, unfortunately, um, only about three minutes, unfortunately. Um, if you'd like to reach me, let me just give you my, again, my name. Um, the easiest email address to reach me at is research at jewishfederations.org. Um, I am going to stop sharing so that I can get back to the uh, chat. Um, feel free, if you'd like, to take yourselves um, off mute if you have any questions. Happy to, to answer. And I'm also just going to um, uh, look at the chat to see if anyone is uh, has generated any questions here. Uh, can I... So yes, yeah, so um, uh, Nikki, um, to answer your question, um, which you posed to everyone, um, uh, we do, we have the, the Weinberg Foundation actually issued a report last year to summarize what we know about um, Jewish poverty. And I believe that there, the data from the St. Louis um, community study was included in that um, uh, as part of, of, of their review. Um, so yeah, we're 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 gonna we we have taken a good look back, and that's actually part of what prompted us to to say uh, while lots of people have approached this issue, um, we we're, we're haven't we haven't been doing it in a standardized way that allows us to to make good comparisons over time. Uh, so uh, that's what we're we're hoping to do going forward. Okay, another question. If you can. So, top two action items um, on how to address these issues. Um, so, look, I think you know demographic data is um, is I think a critical part of this. If you don't know how many uh, and what share of, of, of households in a Jewish community are experiencing these issues, you're sort of operating in the dark. Um, unfortunately. Um, you know, local local studies are expensive. Um, if any if any of you have been involved in in any of them, um, they run into the several hundreds of thousands of dollars, um, which is why we're trying to to, to um, provide grants to to help with that a little bit. Um, so it tends to be the larger communities that that uh, that conduct local Jewish community studies. Um, so I would say, you know, so that that is a that is a constant challenge, the, the budget issues. Um, but I would say that, you know, assuming budget is available or um, the funds can be raised, um, that demographic data, the data is is really critical. Um, and then I think, um, you know, I, I, again, I think I think trying to to standardize and to get. Um, a bunch, you know, a, a, multi, a multi, um, multiple variable approach to understanding the problem. Because clearly it's, you know, part of the issue is income, um, but we also want to know in particular, are people food insecure? Are they housing insecure? Are they having difficulty paying for their medicine? Um, or going to the doctors? Um, so all of those, um, all of those are, I think, important and gives us a broader picture of, uh, of how to do this. Okay, it is 11.40. Um, there's one more question. Are there other ways that I can be there? So that's a great question. Um, it's very, um, um, 
the question is, are there other ways that communities are identifying where and who those in poverty are besides the community studies? Um, I wish I could say there were, um, but they're really, unfortunately, um, we can always, look, we can make some assumptions. We know that Jewish poverty tends to be roughly about half to two thirds of general poverty rates. Um, uh, so if we know a general poverty rate for, for an area, we can kind of make a, a relatively decent guess about what it probably is for the Jewish community, but that doesn't tell you where, it doesn't tell you who, and it doesn't tell you their characteristics. Um, so, um, Unfortunately, uh, uh, research, you know, research is expensive and it's time consuming as well, but it's really the only way um, to get a really good handle on um, and to really understand your local population um, in depth. So, um, all right, it is, it's now 1142. I, this is the second session. So you all, you all have, a, have a half an hour break now. Um, I'm also actually, hang on, I'm supposed to, um, put one more link in the chat um, for all of you. Um, and this is for, um, this is the link for you to, uh, after your break, um, when you come back at 210, that's the link you're supposed to use to get back into your sessions. Um, it's for the program starting at 2.10. So you can, you can use that link. You may have that in other resources as well, but we were asked just to, to let you know that as, uh, as we were finishing. Um, okay, so thank you everyone for joining. Um, again, please uh, be, uh, feel free to be in touch with me at research at jewishfederations.org um, about the initiative, about community studies in general, um, about other types of research that your federation may be interested in. Uh, community studies are not the only the only type of research that's possible. Um, so please, uh, please feel free to, to reach out and we can, we can find a time to talk. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much and um, enjoy the rest of your, uh, your afternoon at FedLab.